Well, welcome to Impact Thursday night. I'm Ken Turner of Impact Ministries. We're in Holly Springs, Georgia, just north of Atlanta. Come visit us. The information where we're located is on the screen. Uh, send me an email if you need uh, any questions answered or need to contact me. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We welcome you, Lord, to come and have your way here tonight. Lord, we're just a people that are needy tonight for you. We've come in from this world that has put a lot of stuff on us. I feel the heaviness of the burdens, the things that have been drug in here. Just the attachments of this world that as we live in it just, uh, just drop onto us. Even the ones watching, Lord, uh, the heaviness that's trying to bind us, trying to keep us down, trying to destroy us. It's the John 10.10, 10, the thief is coming to kill, steal, and destroy. But tonight, he's going to give you life. And really abundant, overflowing life. That's what's going to happen tonight. For the ones that's walked in <clears throat> with a heaviness, the burdens, the anxiety, the fear, the depression. It will be broken. May the 14th. 14 means deliverance. Amen. And there's a deliverance here tonight that will happen oh, through the night, especially at the end for yes. some people. Thank you. Lord, I, I believe matter of fact, I know tonight there's generational curses that will be broken. Thank you. I know when Nancy Ashenbeck teacher, she's a tremendous teacher, she will even speak of things that will bring those things up to the surface. And then we'll minister over those things and there will be deliverance. Matter of fact, not just deliverance, there will be restoration. And we will reclaim the land. Why not? We've talked about it many times. We, we have the supernatural Holy Spirit living in us, each one of us. The resurrection power of Christ lives in us. The, I don't, you know, I, I have a hard time wrapping my mind around that. And then he said, I give you authority to speak my word over things. So, why not tonight for the people that have come in? <clears throat> As the things in this world are dying yes. and the enemy is getting more abusive yes, yes. and the deception is getting darker, yes. guess what? Amen. We're the candle on the hill. Amen. Amen. Tonight we're going to take some of those buckets that have been over your candle. Mm -hmm. Because you don't think you're good enough. You don't think you have enough to do or the power to do it or the relationship. You're under religious things that have bound you. I'm feeling there's some, some people that have been bound. I think that's watching us on the YouTube. It's a religious spirit. I come against that religious yes. spirit. Those things that bind you. You don't have to perform. All you have to do is surrender, says the Lord. He said, give yourself to me. Ask me to come into your heart, and I will change the things in your life. I will change you, but I might not change the things around you. Right. I'll change you. I'll give you a peace. I'll give you a hope. I'll give you a strength. I'll give you a, a joy that's unspeakable, full of glory. That's what I offer. It's free. Receive it. I think some of you in the room need that tonight. Need to receive the grace of God again. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of those people that, and I believe I get saved every day. I don't know if that's <laughs> good Southern Baptist doctrine, but I'm one. <laughs> but that, you know, that is a scriptural that we do grow every day. But I, I'm noticing lately, and I know a lot of the people in the room that I've known for decades now, not just years, that there's a pressing in now. Mm -hmm. There's a pu purification. There's a laying things down. There's a 
choosing up teams, as James teaches, James Trebet teaches about the many and the few. We're, you know, we're getting fewer. And if you watch the news media, it talks about Christianity in America. Guess what? The, the percentage has gone down. And it's not the other religions going up. Guess what's going up? The non-believers. And that's sad, but that's what it said in the end times. And persecution's coming. Matter of fact, some of you have already been persecuted, but what does he say when persecution comes? Praise him. That's right. Because you've been doing his work. I want to be Paul and Silas. I see me and Don and Paul and Silas in the dungeon down at where. We're singing, but it's not a... I know either one of us, I wouldn't want to hear it. But the praises of God, and we get, we're we chained down, and they want to kill us. But guess what? We're going to sing the song of the Lord. And the chains are going to be broken off. Matter of fact, I believe tonight, as music at the end comes forth, when the music comes forth and the songs come forth, chains will start to be broken. I prophesy that over you. Can you believe with me? Yes. There's a spirit of faith welling up in here. I'm feeling, I'm getting charged up. It's, it's almost, you know, I, I, the spirit, of, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, for the ones that are watching, there is a gift of faith. We have faith, but there's a gift of faith. And it's almost like you got one of those power units, those what you, generators. As, as we go all over the world, James buys generators and so he can do his powerful. I feel like the generator, generator just got, I just got connected to a generator. Amen. The Holy Spirit's power, the power of faith. Thank you, Lord. I might do some moving here. <laughs> I want to hook this lady up with the power line. Can I pray for you? Yes, you can. Okay. What is your name? Cheryl. Cheryl. Can I hold your hand? Can I hold your hand? Yes, you can. Thank you. I'm, I'm nice to always ask. Cheryl. Father, we thank you for the infusion. The infusion of life, Lord. Supernatural life. Powerful life. As the enemies come to try to cripple her. I just sense that you, just the life has been sucked out of you. About family members, some of them. But God said, I'm your family now. I'm your Father in heaven. He said, pray to me and I will answer your prayers. I'm infusing you with supernatural power from on high. This is a heavenly download to you, says the Lord. I'm putting some new tunes in you. Sometimes you get the wrong tunes. It's the tunes of sorrow, the tunes of weeping, but I'm going to put a tune of joy in you. I'm changing the tune in your life. And nobody will be able to change that on you. No words, no things will come against you. My tune will be you. The joy tune. Do you want joy? God said that I'm going to give it to you, but you've got to start speaking it over yourself. And I come against those people around you. I cut them off. The ones that are tormenting you. I think I'm going to let go. Look at me. There's people around you that try to suck the life out of you. And it might be family. That's okay. you got to take care of your family. But God said, I'm, I'm bringing some new connections for you. I see you. You've been praying about different things and direction and some things. And God said, I'm bringing correct uh, connections, supernatural Christian connections for you. You've been a believer for a while. No. Uh, well, that's a you can get a college education for you. <laughs> <laughs> You've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. So he said, I'm sending you. Would you like to travel the world? Definitely. Do you have a heart to travel the world? Would like to. 
<laughs> Let me give you a pass. Lord, I thank you. Send her. Send her with your message back to people all over the world. But she has a place in her heart that she'd like to go. Lord, I sense that you're going to send her and bring healing and wholeness into her family, her generations, and many people, Lord. As you've as she's crawled up on the cross many times and died. It's like a flower's coming up now. You love flowers. And God said, my flowers are blooming in your life now. They're starting to bloom where they've been dead and they've been dormant. There's a new flower, this, a new aroma that's coming for you. It'll be healing to your family. And he said, you don't have to worry. He said, I come against that spirit of worry and fretting and all those things. You have faith in you. I sense faith in you. He said, I'm taking care of those things. You've been praying about a situation, I don't know if it's financial or family. And he said, I heard your prayer. Is this making sense? It does. And he said, I heard your prayer, but I'm, I'm getting things ready on their side. You've done yours. Just wait. Sometimes you have some kind of, most of us have a problem waiting for God to do things. So just wait. He's doing things. Can you wait a little while? I've been waiting. Okay. The door is getting ready to open. You don't have to even open. He's going to open it for you. Jesus. Anybody else have anything for this young lady? So I got a power pack. be about the things she's supposed to be about. I, I believe her life is ordered. The great things of God are before her. And God said, choose. Your heart's right. You'll choose my things. You'll choose the things that I like. And they'll be my things. Father, let her open the pages. I see a, a new thing starting. I, seen this for a few people that your life has been this thing is like a book and getting ready to start a new book new notes you like to write you like to write things down start writing new things you're going to have dreams and he's going to give you things instructions That's, you would like that right now you got a decision to make and it seems like it's a relational word it's, it's, God said don't rush don't move without peace. Many of us in the room, we, sometimes we move into situations without peace because we want those things. I mean, I've been there and done it a hundred times. This is not one of those things you rush. You wait for the peace. You wait for His peace and glory to be on you. It's a big decision. He's undergirding you. He wants you to know you're a storm and how very much He loves you. He has His arms wrapped around you. He's pulling you close. I hear Father say, don't pull away. Don't pull away, darling. 
pulling closer to me. Let me hold you. Let me heal you. Let me love on you. It's your time. It's your time. This is what this is about, people learning the gifts they have and using them. And it's uh, from where we started to where we are right now, I'm, I just praise God that Amen. there's not a, a person, you know, many in the room could come up here and stand and do this. And that's what we want. And most of you in the room do that. <coughs> Thank you. I've got a scripture that uh, out of Ephesians 4. And it's something uh, that's been on my heart for a little. It said, let no unwholesome words proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need for the, of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who hear. That's what we've just been doing. That's, that's what the words of God is. It brings grace into people's lives. I, I think, did, that, did you get some grace when you were spoken over it? But it's, it's interesting in this chapter 4, and Donna, I wish he was up here. You know, what what follows after that? It's a scripture that's been on my heart in the last few weeks. Verse 30 says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God yeah. by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. This is that kind of season. I, I'm For me, I, I'm not saying everybody in the room, but it's almost like I'm watching where I'm stepping. It's almost like the ground I want to take my shoes off. There's a holiness. There's a something in the room that's this here. I don't want to. I don't want to grieve God at all. And sometimes I just want to be quiet and hear God. We talk. I we talk too much. Lord, we want to be a place that your Holy Spirit will thrive in. A place that you are drawn to. I know you're in our hearts, Lord, but as we unite as a body of believers here on Thursdays, that you come and do what you will with our lives. Lord, we come in with different things, Lord, but I, I know that you're the Father, that you love each one of us. So tonight, Lord, we thank you for loving on us through teaching, through words of wisdom, words of knowledge, through giving us new strength and new faith. Lord, I thank you. It's a season of thanking you, but Lord, it's a season to be so sensitive in our own lives, that what we do, where we go. Lord, I'm not putting religious laws on people now. I'm just saying be sensitive for what you're doing now. It's not a religious thing. You can't do this and that. It's a sensitivity of the Holy Spirit in your life to see and know and understand what He's doing in your life, what He's saying in your life. Lord, I believe everyone listening, everyone watching tonight, everyone in the room especially, are sensitive people to your Holy Spirit. Lord, let us be. Let us be over the next two or three days, or, or really for weeks, be sensitized by your Spirit, that we are just pull over the car if we feel the Spirit moving on us. Everybody want to do that. I believe we do. I'll give you an instant. I was having, a, after church Sunday, my son has a new church in Smyrna. River City Church and I went out to lunch with my daughter and the gifts of the Spirit move in here and that's what they're supposed to move in the body but they don't just move in here they move out there that's where we need to be moving in the gifts and and you don't make them spiritual thus saith the Lord and all that you, you gotta bring it down to the, the world's and this young lady African American lady was uh, waiting on us at Longhorns in Smyrna. 
and the whole time I saw her, I was sitting there, to, you know, you talk to yourself. No right. Way. I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, but I, I want to say something to her. And so I sit there, you know, she was coming back and forth. I said, got the salad and all that kind of stuff. And my granddaughters were there, and they're 13 and 12, or 13 and 11, my daughter. And, and my daughter looked at me and she said, Dad, you got to work for her, don't you? <laughs> she's, she's, you know, she's, because she's the same way as I am. And I, the young lady came over and asked her name, and she said, I said, can, can I say something to you or ask you a question? And she said, yeah, because there was heaviness on her. I said, you're, you're a believer, aren't you? She said, yes. And God gave me uh, two or three scriptures for her. And she started weeping. And it blesses my soul. She said, you know, I'm so thankful. She said, I, I really needed that. She said, that made my day. And that's what God is. It's not about me doing that. It's about those are gifts that we do. And, you know, now I did feel like I was supposed to give her a big tip. <laughs> not that I don't tip big anyway. But, I, you know, she was hurting. I could, I, you, you can feel the hurt. Right. And... And I do. I mean, I love doing it here. I would rather do it there. Amen. Amen. You know, I said, "Where do you go to church?" And I, try, you know, give a clue for my my son's church. But uh, you know, it's not about that even. It's about being sensitive. That's why I'm talking about this. God wants to sensitize you to hear everything He wants you to hear. He's unclogging our spiritual ears. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But this whole chapter here is, uh, you know, put on the new self. Yes. Take off the old self. You know, that's kind of daily thing with me. I don't know about you. you know. Can we be honest here? I'm, you know, I, I get in 1 John 1 9, that's scripture. I believe I could do that backwards and forwards. <laughs> Who knows what 1 John 1 9 is? If we confess. Hey, if we confess. Now we just blubber right through that. And we we got those you gotta you gotta feel that a little bit. <laughs> you know, that's my Holy Ghost eraser. <laughs> and I need it daily. Oh, we we all do. It's, thank you, Lord. Lord, I do thank you that you are a forgiving God. You know, I'm trying to encourage you tonight that through the teaching in a few minutes that God is elevating us, getting us ready Amen. to get out of, and we talked about this this morning on our Thursday morning, get out of ourself. Yes. You. you know, and be about God's business. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I think we're going to pray a lot at the end. I want to invite the great, the marvelous, the <laughs> wonderful Georgia Turner up to the stage here. I need the mic here to go. Is there a minute? And, and Brett Henderson, too, to come up. And uh, we need a man yeah, who don't have the mic. She's got a presentation here. I'm going to let you stand right here. And, uh, Thank you. Brett, why don't you come down? You just stand right there so you don't see her. Well, i got to hold it up. Oh. Because uh, I got well, to hold the, meeting, the meeting and stuff on the, the back. I painted. Well, the Lord wanted me to paint this for you. Because um, he's really starting to step you out and his, you know, gifts and stuff. And so I'll show it to you. And then I'll read the back. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. So you can hold it up here. Here, here we go. Uh, the Lord gave me Hosea. <laughs> Thank you. Hosea 11.10. And it, uh, they shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. The roar of the lion is the sound of the gospel. With a loud and most powerful voice shall you preach the gospel. Amen. Wow. The day that wait upon the Lord, Isaiah 40, 31. 
They that wait upon the Lord, the Lord shall mount. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So this is for you. Okay? Just trust him. He's going to... He's stretching you. So just, just trust him. Uh, the blue in the picture means life giving flow of the Holy Spirit, prophetic, <laughs> um, <laughs> grace, and knowledge. The white in the picture is holiness, righteousness, and peace. The yellow is the glory of, the, of God. Brown is harvest, sowing, and seed. Wow. Amen. 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 special. Lord, we thank you for that. That is a word from God. Yeah. That's a prophetic picture, prophetic art that I know Georgia would, God just opened the doors up. She didn't even, she'd never done that a year ago, two years, whatever. About a year and a half ago. About a year and a half ago. So it's amazing. Those kind of things will affect you. Brit's affected. <laughs> Lord, I thank you that we have all kind of talent in the room and, and watching that. Lord, show us our talents. This is the time to let them rise up. Rise up and be used, Father. Fine-tune us. Uh, develop us. Father, I thank you as the enemy comes to try to discourage us, to try to Hold us back, Father, that we're breaking through. Amen. Lord, I just see us coming to a line where the enemy's got, a, got us held back and we're, we're the forerunners. We're breaking through. We're knocking the things away. You are for us. As we're singing praises and the warriors are singing and praising you, the lines are being broken. The enemies are falling down and we're going and taking new territory for the kingdom. Matter of fact, we're going into the enemy's kingdom. And reclaiming some of our children, some of our grandchildren, some of our family that have stayed out there. We're going to reclaim those people. Even tonight over the YouTube, we're reclaiming you. We're breaking through into your kingdom, which is a kingdom of darkness and death. And we're bringing life and wholeness and healing to your life. The word of God is healing to you. Receive it. So we're warriors tonight. God is raising us up to be warriors in these end times. Lord, make us a warrior. Show us the skills, the talents, the armament we have. Lord, we're dressed. We know how to dress. You tell us how to do that. But show us our special abilities, our ninjas in this room, Father. The special forces in the room. Whoever we're supposed to be, Lord, show us so we can do it or let us see that in other people and speak it into them. Just like was it was done on the, this prophetic art. And Lord, I know sometimes when we step out in our talents that we get scared. Because as Georgia said, it's stretching. He said to step out of your comfort zone. Step, step out. out of your comfort step zone. Out. Yeah, you got once you step into God's glory, you know, it's anytime you minister, you know, it's when you step into a place of ministry that you're called into, you step into his glory. And it's, right. it's it, this is not hard. You know, I, I love doing this. I'd rather do this 24 hours a day and not go home <laughs> and not deal with that other garbage, <laughs> to be honest with you. But that's where he wants you to find if you haven't found that place. I think many in the room have found the place. Thank you, Lord. What I'm saying seems rambling, but it's really not. It's to a point. Mm -hmm. This is time to step out and step up and, and fly like an eagle. He's calling our group to be eagles. In Jesus' name. I think we're ready for it. 
I've, I've been playing that one note song for a special person in the room. Until <laughs> he got here. But uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do you need this back there? I'm going to turn it out off. We'll wait just a second. step into anything there's there's a real enemy out there so but I'm telling you you we have more power we may have more things if you just realize that thank you father Lord I do thank you that we are stepping into new territory Lord you're raising us up that Thursday night we have few people we have many people it's not about Thursday night it's, it's about what we do from this point on in our ministries, our callings. Lord, you bring the right people for this season here. And out there on the YouTube, you're connecting us with people all over the world. That many in this room will go there, where they are, as we've done in the past. So Lord, I thank you. Use this next step, this next ministry, as I invite uh, Nancy Ashenbeck up, the teacher of the night, respected prophet, Evangelist. See if you think you're working now. Is it on? Just yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Can y'all hear me? Yes. yes. Men and women of God, it is so good to be here with y'all tonight. My name is Nancy Ashenbeck, and my ministry is called Lighting the Way Ministries. I have a ministry, the, a very big part of inner healing and deliverance. And God has given me a very powerful truth to share with y'all tonight. And I want y'all to please join in with me to pray, and let's get our hearts prepared for what God has for each of us. Father, Almighty God, my precious Lord and Savior, how I love you. Lord, we, your children, love you. We come tonight worshiping your holy name. Almighty God, you are King of kings and you are Lord of lords. And there is none like you. And Father, I thank you. I thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for us. Yes. Oh, thank you for your sacrifice. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you for enlightening us. Be with us this night. Father God, we come before your throne and Lord, we ask that you forgive us for anything that we have said and done that we should have never done. We should have never opened our mouth and said. For the things, Father, that we aren't even aware of. We come and we give every bit of it to you. For your word says to us, my children, finally, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. For our fight is not against each other, 
We do not war against flesh and blood, but it's against the rulers and the authorities of this dark world. Lord, it's against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms and against the princes and principalities of darkness. And your word says, after we've done all that we know to do, we stand with that belt of truth around our waist. We stand with our feet readied in the gospel of peace. We stand with the shield of faith to ward off Satan and every demon of hell and every hour that comes our way. And we place on the helmet of salvation and we take up the sword of the Spirit, your word. God, that is sharper than any two-edged sword. And we move in authority in it, Father God. And we thank you that this day that you have come, Lord God, to set the captive free. Father, we thank you that you've come this day to bring the prisoner out of the dungeon. And we give you honor and we give you praise and we give you glory. In your holy, holy, holy name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Look at the world around us. What's going on? There is a fence everywhere. And it's almost like it has been highlighted. And God said, Nancy, pay note. Pay note. And what has taken place in this offense? I see people out there hurting. They're hurting fear. I see anxiety. I see stress and worry. I see things that haven't been handled right in their life and it's playing out in front of all of us. And you know, it builds. So you start out with this anger. And then you get, you know, it goes in this bitterness. And this hate comes. And then this rage comes. And then murder comes. And what is it coming in? People are offended. They don't know why they're doing what they're doing. A lot of people don't understand it. But that is a normal thing. And God's saying that's so abnormal. It's so not his way. It's so not his plan. And it's so not his purpose. And he told me, Nancy, this is in my body. He said, it's in the church. I want my children healed. This offense is holding you back from the things that I have for you to be doing. And I want my children free. For they've got a powerful calling and a powerful destiny. And a lie has been believed and it has kept people back from moving in what God Almighty has for them to move in. And I thought, Lord, show me. And I'll teach your kids. And what I found is it starts with me. And God goes and he works in my heart. And he starts showing me lies that Nancy's believed. And he starts showing me things that has been in my life that's caused offense and has caused hurt. And about the time that I begin to get it, my phone starts ringing. It's what I do for a living. God lets me get it and then people start calling me. And I'm able to pour into them to be able to help them to be set free. And I have a saying in my office. And as I was preparing for this, God brought this to my attention. What lies behind us and what lies before us are small matters compared to what lies within us. Because you see, what lies behind us and what lies before us we're going to handle with what lies within us. And it's either going to be to God's glory or it's either going to be out of our hurt and pain and the enemy trumps. And God wants us to get what's lying within us and he wants us to understand why we are acting and reacting the way that we are because when we get it, 
then we get the privilege of being able to go out and set the captive free. And we're going to go out and we're going to see and we're going to know and we're going to be able to give that word of encouragement. And we're going to be able to speak that truth so that others can be freed of this. So as I began preparing, I had a phone call from a dear friend. And there's been a group of men that my husband's been involved with, and they've also been studying on offense. And when I found out they were doing it, I went and got me a book. I wanted to know it too, and I wanted to be able to do this with my husband so that we could come out of this together. Because I felt in my heart this was real big. And I began to share this with James Trevett. He goes, Nancy, do you remember a few months ago I told you you were going to be speaking on offense? I said, no, I really didn't remember it. I said, but as God prepares my heart, I'll teach it, James. So my friend called, and he said, Nance, I feel like my whole life, my whole life, I've responded out of the spirit of offense. He goes, is that possible? I said, oh, yeah, I believe it's possible. And I was able to pray with him and help him to see and hear him get it and see freedom. And I want to share with y'all what happened to me and how God began to teach Nancy. You see, when I was in my mother's womb, my father had a great offense toward my mother. He had a great offense toward me. And my little spirit was picking up in the womb offense. I didn't know that. My daddy was raised in a fence. This is a generational thing. So I've been growing up, living my life, and what was in front of me, not who God made me to be, but a fence. And I was filtering the way I responded and acted and did through a spirit of a fence. And when God began to show me that, I thought, okay, Lord, I can get that. I believe that. And I thought, how do I break through from this, Lord? I know about the mind, the will, and the emotions. You know, that's our soul realm. I get that. I know about our physical body. We're made of that. But God told me, he said, Nance, this is bigger than that. This is your spirit, man. Yes. And I thought, Okay, explain to me this, Lord. He said, when your spirit got violated, it runs deeper than our, our mind, our will, and our emotions. And I thought, oh my word, Lord, that's it. That's why I can't get through things? This is a, a place I haven't touched on yet, that I haven't understood? And when there's somebody in a spiritual place of authority in your life that in some way has wounded you, that runs deep. And it can be a parent. It can be somebody, a boss. It could be anyone. Anyone. It could be a pastor. You know, it has a special place. And God said, Nance, I want to teach you about an arrow. Study about an arrow. I thought, an arrow, Lord? He goes, yeah, an arrow. So I got me a little arrow and, you know, and I went to study and I thought, okay, Lord, what are you telling me about this arrow? Well, the first thing I thought about was the Word of God and what is the Word, where the Lord brought me for the scripture was the fiery darts, the shield of faith, and I thought, okay, Lord, so that means I didn't have that armor on right at times, and this arrow got right through, and it hit me. But then there was other things that, as a baby, I didn't know that, but this arrow was already in me. And I thought, interesting, Lord. And then he goes, okay, research further. So I researched further. And I had talked about the arrow in, the, in war days. And when they took this arrow and it was shot at you, the arrow goes in, be it to the bone, be it into the, um, you know, our intestine, an organ, wherever. 
and it shoots in. And the tip of the arrow gets embedded there. And you've got this tip in here embedded, and then you've got the shaft of the arrow coming out. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Nancy, that arrow is in. And he said, somebody can come up to you and say, why are you responding that way? What's wrong with you? The arrow just twisted a little bit further, right on down in there. Caused a little bit more pain. Somebody else may come along, and I don't know how to handle something, and I've talked with them, and they said, cowboy up. Somebody else may say, put on your big girl pants. What's wrong with you? Deeper, the hour is twisting. With every turn, this is twisting. Then somebody else may come along and say, you know what? Get over it and move on. And they came and they took my arrow and they yanked out the shaft. But you see, the point got left in. And it stayed in, and it stayed in. First I thought it was better because, see, this was no longer rubbing up on me. But then God said, I started feeling this pain. And that's this arrow that had been, the point of this arrow that had stayed in me, causing more infection. By this time, it's been covered up. Now there's scar tissue. But the infection is just growing and growing in it. And God spoke to me and he said, but now, Nancy, I'm going to go in. And I'm going to show you how to remove this arrow. And every bit of the infection that came in with it. And I thought, Lord, thank you. Because you know, when man tries to rip this out, think about it. Think about it, y'all. When you pull it out, this thing is sharp. It's going to re rip open everything. And not handle right the infections left in there. And it's going to hurt. And it's going to cause tears and pain. And that infection not dealt with is going to cause death. And I believe, you know, we hear the thing about um, when we get some mad, our blood pressure boils. I dare say, is it an arrow that's been left? And is that why your blood pressure is high? And is that why you're boiling? Is a vent someplace so deep in there? So God, have me in a little situation. And I'll just share with y'all. That situation only took 13 years. 13 years. I'm sure nobody else has walked into fence that long. I have, so that's just the way it is. I was working at a church. And there was a pastor there. And he was over the finances of the church. And the first time I saw this gentleman... He reminded me of my granddaddy. And I had an instant love for him, just from his little smile, because it reminded me of my granddaddy that I loved so dearly and was so close to me. Well, it was Christmas time, and I worked in the student ministry's office. And um, this pastor came up, and I knew that our church at that time was having financial problems. He is there to take care of the finances and get things on the right course. I respected that. I knew it. But I had gone to the store and I had bought a bag of candy for $10 and I had it up in the office so that the parents and the students and whoever came in at Christmas time, they could have a piece of candy. He walks in the office and he looks at me and he says, so Nancy, bought a bag of candy? I said, yes. So you thought it was okay to spend $10 on a bag of candy? I said, yes, I sure did. He said, so you really think that that was needed up here? I said, yes, it's Christmas time. I want kids to have candy. 
So it's, you really felt it was okay to spend $10. Well, you know, about by this time, I'm getting the drift. <laughs> and I said, yes, I did. But it's quite obvious that you don't. And I know that this is your job, and this is what you owe for, and I hear you loud and clear, and I will not do it again. And he went on to the office where my boss was, and you know, they talked or whatever. And the Lord spoke to me. And he said, Nancy, I put him over that. I said, I know that, and I'll honor him. But. Always a but. There was a big but. <laughs> How dear. I cannot believe he just came in here and he said this to me. And I had an opportunity at that moment to decide to listen to the small voice within me of God saying, don't go there, or what was already in front of me. Yes. Who did that man remind me of? My granddaddy. That wound, let me tell you, that thing hurt. And Nancy went into pride and arrogance. How dare you? Who does he think he is talking to me? How many countless hours have I given here? Not on the peg. Really? Really. So, you know, time goes by. I leave. You know, I had another job. My time was over. And I found out that eventually he retired. And I thought, well, that's good. Then I found out that he moved. I thought, yes, now I don't have to worry about even running to me at the grocery store. <laughs> now that's the honest truth. Wow. Well, because I didn't want to deal with it. See, the arrow, the shaft was gone, but the tip was in. And I was poisoned. And I held on to that for 13 years. And I began to study. And God changed my heart. And one day I called when I woke up and God brought this to my attention. And I thought, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I began weeping. And I've just learned with me, there's times that I can just deal with stuff with God and move on. There's other times I weep. And you know, God just, we all deal with things differently. Depends. Well, that day in particular, I woke up and I was sobbing uncontrollably. Because I was getting the knowledge of offense. And I was seeing the deadliness to this. And I didn't want to live underneath that. I want everything God has for me. And I want to be an empowerment for his kingdom. And I would do anything that he said for me to do. It did not matter to me. If I had to get in my car and drive to where they lived, I would have gone. If I had to have called him, I would have gone. Because you know, there will be things that are going to come up we're going to have to handle. And sometimes we can handle it just between us and God. There's times that I just need to talk something out with somebody. And then I get it. And it's like I can let it go and I can move on. But I knew this was going to be more than that. So I prayed. And I knew at this time that my husband had a very... This, at work, he was in a crunch and they had a big project that had to get out. And here I am in an emotional mess. And I thought, oh God, I don't need to be calling Rick at work. This is just not a good day for him. And then I thought, but I need my husband. And I picked up the phone and I called him. I said, hun, and he was in work mode. And he said, hey, hun, what do you need? And I said, honey, I need to talk to you. And Rick said, hold on just a minute. And he removed himself out of work mode and out of the place that he was in. And he went to another area to talk to me. He goes, okay, what's, what's going on? And he just let me sob. I have no idea what he said to me, but I can tell you just like that, my tears stopped. And it wasn't what he said. He made, he didn't... He, he loved me. He took time out of work because I needed him. And you know, that was a perfect opportunity, not handled that way, for this offense to stay deeper.
because there's nobody on this earth at this time of my life that could hurt me. You know, there's nothing more precious than that relationship. But what he did that day was he brought her healing to me. And then I was able to get with God because I could actually think. It was like, thank you. And I'm telling y'all, at 4 o'clock, God spoke to me. And you know, I'm, I'm very prophetic, and I think of four, and I believe that this touched from the north, the south, the east, and the west, the four corners of this earth, in the empowerment and what God has for me to be doing. And God gave me an email, a note, and to write to him. Boy, I sat down, and he said, you can send it to him in a private message through Facebook, because I knew he was on Facebook, but trust me, he wasn't my friend. But I sent the private message through Facebook. <laughs> And let me tell y'all, I wrote that note just as open and honest as I've talked to y'all. I told him, I said, I've been angry at you. I thought, really? My pride and arrogance got in the way? I said, and not only that, I talked to people about it. I just want you to know I ran my mouth. And I have been wrong. Will you please forgive me? Please forgive me. And I sent that thing off. And let me tell y'all, it mattered not to me what that pastor said to me. It didn't matter to me if he responded to me, if he said forgiven, not forgiven. It didn't matter. I had obeyed God. Amen. I had been obedient to what God told me to do. Amen. And my heart got set free. Amen. And I'm telling you, men and women of God, I did this. I was sitting in my living room when I wrote this, and we've got three windows together in our living room. And I turned and I looked out the window. The trees were beautiful green. The grass looked great. And I thought, oh my God, I can see so much more plain now. The veil had came off of my eyes, and God opened up a new way of seeing for me. Few minutes later, God gave me an open heaven visitation and he showed me his glory. And I thought, oh my word, Lord Jesus, how I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And over this time, I hear clear. My relationship with God Almighty and others has grown more. I don't want offense in my life. If I hurt somebody, I'm going to them. I want nothing standing in front of me. And God showed me for years. I believed a scripture the wrong way. And in my wound, it's, um, oh, put it up for me. Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, Amen. for they shall be called the children of God. Amen. Let me tell y'all how I read this. I read this. Blessed are the peacekeepers. At all costs, they can never say anything, and they have to stuff it, and it's wrong. They can put on a fake smile and do whatever, and that's the way I'm supposed to live my life because God knows it means he said something. All hell might break loose, and what I experienced at the womb with my dad might happen is something worse. So I have to have an artificial relationship and I've got to compromise how I really feel. That's what I believe. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it said, not a peacemaker, mm -hmm. but a peacekeeper. Mm -hmm. And I had to keep peace at all costs for everybody. Mm -hmm. And God only knows if I didn't, what might happen? Mm -hmm. Oh my word, somebody might get mad at me. Mm -hmm. And I might be destroyed because the fence was in front of me. Mm -hmm. And I emotionally, I couldn't handle anymore. So that's the route that I went until freedom. Mm -hmm. Until freedom. And then God showed me about being a peacemaker. And that I can go in in his love. In his compassion. And I can say, you know, this isn't right. We're off here. And I don't want to stay like this. I love you. I love God so much. Let's talk about this and get it right. I don't want to carry any of this anymore. And I can do it in boldness. In the boldness of God Almighty and in the love of God Almighty. And you know, men and women of God, sometimes we'll be received and sometimes we won't. But it's okay. That's right. Because it's about our heart. That's right. And if our heart is right, that's all that matters. That's right. And I am so excited 
to be able to come and say, we don't have to live underneath this. And this power of offense is broken, going to be broken. We're going to pray over this tonight. Amen. And we're going to walk in a level of freedom that we have never known before. And God wants to heal the broken hearted. Enough is enough. It has kept us from our destiny. And whatever it is that is in front of us, that has kept us from moving in the power, authority, love, and compassion of Almighty God. In the name of Jesus, we are coming against that tonight. And it will be broken off of our lives. And we are going to move in what God has got for us to do. Amen. We have work to do for the kingdom Amen. of God. Amen. And we've got to be empowered. And we've got to be suited up and armored up in the right way. So when the schemes of the enemy come, we recognize them and we say absolutely no to them. And I firmly believe, I've been in deliverance a lot of years. But let me tell you, I don't know that there's anything that's impacted my life more than learning about the spirit of offense. Mm. And that has changed me from the inside out. Because that slide up, um, I read to y'all earlier, what happens within me is how I'm going to be affecting everything that I say, everything that I do. And all I want is to honor God. Amen. Amen. And whatever has to be shown, deal with it. Amen. However it looks, give me, God, your grace and let me see. And it's his grace and it's his love and it's his truth that sets the captive Free. Amen. And we are here today to break this off of our family bloodline. Yes. We see our kids walking in this. Yes. We see, I see my brothers and sisters. I see this. I see the body of Christ. And it is time to take off the stained glass masquerade and be who we are. Amen. Glory. Yeah. And walk in what we've been called to do. Amen. So I'd like to pray with everyone tonight. Amen. Ken, will you come and join with me? I have offended you. We're good. <laughs> She's talking is kind of like, I feel like this is kind of like. <laughs> Guys, I talked to a group of businessmen about this a couple of weeks ago, and these hours are razor sharp. They really do a lot of damage. And I was in there doing, those guys were, Nancy, be careful. Do you see, do you know how dangerous this is? Would you put that hour down? Be careful. It was hilarious. <laughs> so I had been warned. That that thing could do a lot of damage. <laughs> oh, God. Lord, God. we love you. Oh, how we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just thank you for everyone who is here in this room. I thank you, God, for those that are watching this on the video. God, I thank you that you came this night. And your power, and you come, and you pour it into us. And you said, this is your night for freedom. Yes. This is your night. It is the 14th. Kenneth said, this is the day of deliverance. God makes no mistakes. He orchestrated this, knew it would be this day, so that we can walk in freedom. And I just come right now and I pray. Yes. I pray over your broken hearts. I pray, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to sh pray with y'all the way God did with me. Yes. The Lord showed me. He went into my heart, to my very spirit. And in His loving, gentle hands, He opened up where that arrow had gone in and where that tip and he lovingly cupped his hand around that. And he pulled out that arrow with all the infection, with 
all the hurt, with all the pain, with all the lines. And he pulled it out and he laid it at the cross. The blood that his son shed covered it. And then his healing hand came and covered and pulled that area and I see that for everyone that is here. That the arrow of offense and all that has been placed with it, God Almighty is bringing in His healing hand and removing that from you. And it's being laid at the foot of the cross, covered underneath His blood. Yes. Almighty God, I thank you for the healing of this this night. I thank you, Lord, for coming in and these captives being set free from this, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, how I thank you, Father. Lord, we give you honor and we give you praise and we give you glory for who you are and for what you are doing, Almighty God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. And I pray over your emotions, be healed in Jesus' name. I pray over the generational curses that's been associated with this to be broken in your bloodline washed clean. I speak to you this day that you're taking your rightful place. That the anointing that God has on your life and the identity that he had for you before the foundation of this world now rests upon you. And you're moving in to your destiny. You're moving in. And I hear the Lord saying, you are the head and you're not the tail. You are above and you are not beneath. You have been called and set apart, sanctified and made holy under His blood. You are His sons and you are His daughters and He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He wants you to know you are forgiven. His blood on Calvary took care of it. And he's wrapping his arms around you and holding you close and loving you from the inside out. And know this day you walk out differently than what you came in. And I speak life where there has been death. I speak life over each and every person here. And I speak the blessings of Almighty God. And I pray for every gift and talent that God has given into you to come forth in the name of Jesus. And it will be magnified to a higher level. I pray for God's authority to be upon you in the name of Jesus. And you will move in the spirit of righteousness. God says in his word in Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his right ways, and all these things will be added unto you. That's what we are here doing. Expect it. Receive it. Receive it. We are the children of the King of kings and the Lord of lords and nothing will be held back from his children. He wants to give to us and he wants to move in us. And this is a time that he's coming and he is preparing the saints in power and in authority and in his name of love and compassion and truth and honesty because he wants right relationships. Enough is enough, God says. It's time for truth and love and right relationships. Amen. God, I pray for every mask to fall off in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Every mask, God. God's given you beauty, beauty tonight for where ashes has been. Beauty, beauty, beauty. I speak it over you this night in the name of Jesus. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Rise up. Rise up, rise up, rise up, men and women of God. Rise 
up and take your rightful place as children of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's interesting that 14 means deliverance. You know what 13 means? Rebellion. Wow. Rebellion. Rebellion. 13. Wow. It's, uh, you know, and we all rebel. And the offense is, uh, you know, until we started talking, I remember the day that James said something so I, and I didn't know you didn't hear that, you know, but not that, but, you know, there's a lot of people that carry that. I, I do. I have to watch that. There's people in this room maybe watching that have been offended. Have you been offended? What do you do when you get offended? Confess it. Cry. <laughs> Amen. You confess it, you cry. <laughs> but what's the other F word? <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Forgive. Eventually. <laughs> 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 okay. But God, but God is, uh, you know, where's the place you, you need to clean your accounts up? Because that's what Nancy's talking about. And, uh, and I just want to. Because I believe you have some words for some people, and maybe bread or whoever. But uh, well, we do thank you that your body can be healed. Lord, I sense that the blood of Christ has been flowing in and out of this room tonight. I know that's a figurative thing, but spiritually, I sense that the angels of God have come in, a band of angels to come in and take away all these offenses. Lord, we thank you that you forgive us, you cleanse us, you let the things drop to the ground now. Lord, the people watching us, the people in the room, all those things that were done to you or you did to other people, just let them drop off of you. Yes. Those weights, those, it's, it's by the key of forgiveness or unforgiveness. Forgive yourself now. If the person that you offended is dead, the Lord will help you forgive, get forgiveness for yourself for that. Amen. Write them a letter. Do whatever. But God will set you free. Yes. I had to sit at my father's grave and write him a letter and bury it there. Because of all the stuff, like Nancy, we all have stuff we that's been put on us. So Lord, we don't take this lightly tonight. I believe this is a turning point, a pivotal point. This is where the enemy is used to keep us, as Nancy said, right? Keep us from walking in our true calling and destiny. Because it takes your identification away. It takes who you are in the spirit realm away because you don't feel worthy. So we come against those spirits, those generational things that have washed over us. The ones that Nancy even said, I had the same thing happen to me in the mother's womb. We wash those things away. Mm. Invade those areas, Father. Yes, Almighty God. Everyone that's had those things mm. that were done to them in the womb or uh, and through their parents, through their brothers and sisters, through, I sense there's women that are watching it that have cousins or people that have abused them. Things that you don't want to even talk about. Things that were done to you. Forgive them. Those were offensive. Yes. And they put chains on you. That have, you rattle when you walk. Mm. Lord, let those drop off tonight. Jesus. Let the healing flow in. The Jordan River is like a healing river coming through here. Lord, that we ask you to let it just flow. And let us float on it. Lord, let us just be about in the, in the river. And there are men. Yes. There are men that have been touched inappropriately. And God's wanting to heal you tonight. And it was offensive 
and it was wrong. And I pray, forgive those who have harmed you. Yes. Forgive them so that you can move forward. So that you can move forward. And God, I pray right now, and I pray for everyone who has been touched inappropriately, molested in some way, form, or fashion, God, that right now in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, Lord, every defiling spirit that came upon them, every lie that they believed because of that, and where it has stunted them from growing, I pray right now for the cleansing blood of God Almighty to come in and take care of that area. I pray, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, you scour it, Lord. Scour it. Almighty God, I pray for the ones who have done the damage in that way, God. Oh, God, set them free and let them know your cleansing blood. And Father God, I pray that they also can forgive themselves, Father. Oh, Lord Almighty, let there be a powerful move of the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Flowing in forgiveness. Flowing in your love. Flowing in your compassion. Almighty God, heal the broken heart. Does anybody, do you have something? The Lord said, He loves you. And you are forgiven. And the Father says, No. Forgive yourself. For you are established in my kingdom. And I love you with an everlasting love. And the Father would say, there's many gifts that I have for you, my son. Know who you are, for you are worthy in my kingdom to receive the gifts that I have for you. And the Lord showed me your heart. And he was removing the errors. They even saw that the heart was seared. But he was taking his precious hand and massaging and removing the offenses yes. in Jesus' name. For my son, this night, you are made whole. Walk in the glory and honor that I have given you as an heir to the throne through Jesus Christ, my son, my beloved, who I am well pleased as I am as well pleased with you. In Jesus' name. I was getting the Lord put a new robe on you. It's a white robe. It's a holy robe that will cover you, will protect you, will keep you from a lot of the things that will try to come back on you. But Lord, we ask you to cover him. Father, as you're doing this deep healing, this wound that was uncovered, that you're bringing healing and wholeness. It's almost like you missed some growing up time. You, you had to be somebody you didn't want to be before you were there. And God said, I'm going to make that up to you. I'm going to let you have a time of fun and playing and going back and doing some things that you didn't get a chance to do. You're going to recover some things. It's a time of freedom and freshness and newness. A time of joy and peace. It's a new season. It's a new season. God, I pray. over his mind. Yes, Almighty God, I break in the name of Jesus every mind-binding spirit that would come against him. 
and every form of torment that has truly been its identity. No more. No more. What is your name? Father, I come in Jesus' name and I speak over Wayne. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I call you for in Jesus' name. I call you for this in Jesus' name. Every emotion in order. Every emotion in order. Every emotion in order. In Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet, from the sole of your feet to the top of your head. Balance. I speak for the DNA that God Almighty had for you before the foundation of this world. Nail sets upon you. Nail sets upon you. Those things have been broken so you can receive who you are. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, as we come to the, I'm going to play a song that I think we need to play just to sit with our eyes closed to let it be a part of the healing. Even for the, I know the ones on the video will not hear this because we cannot put the music. But Lord, I thank you. Use this song. Use the music yes. for it as we get to the end, as we get ready to the end to pray even more for people. But thank you, Lord. thank you that you're taking our hearts tonight. Yes, Lord. Lord, thank you for the word that Nancy gave on offense and how it affected her life and how it affects all of us, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you're taking our heart, right? Is that song the same? We give you our heart tonight, new and afresh. All of us, Lord. For the season we're going into, Lord, you need to help us with this. Yes. You need to let the things rise up out of our heart, out of our spirit. Those offenses, those things, those unforgiveness, those things that torment us. This is tonight, not so much being here, but through this night as we leave, as we go home, even the people watching that, those things that come up in your mind, in your spirit, lay them on the altar of God. Lay them on the footsteps that he'll take care of those things he will do what needs to be done I, I believe God is doing some deliverance tonight we don't have to scream we don't have to yell we just have to come in and say Lord deliver me help me some of the deepest times I've had when I didn't have the words to say Lord I would just say help Amen. help us Lord yes. you know what needs to be, be done in each one of us Sometimes we try to figure things out. But Lord, I thank you tonight. Use these words, these messages, the songs tonight as we leave and go. Just help us tonight. Let each one of us, as we lay our heads down to go to sleep, be able to sleep restfully and peacefully. I prophesy that over us. A good night's sleep, a restful sleep. And Lord, I pray that many will have dreams encouraging dreams that will show them that they were healed, they were set free. And some might even be awake at a certain time that you will speak things into them. I believe tomorrow, this weekend, that some of us will have open visions like Nancy had, that you'll show them things that, that you took care of. You'll give them a scene that will be whole and healthy for them that they'll see and, and put it in their memory and take those other memories out of their mind that they can replace them with these whole and healthy memories. I do come against mind games. I sense even now, and I'm not sure if it's in the room or on the camera, 
Jesus name. that we break off any of those mind games that say even after tonight it'll say this is not real it's just a bunch of words it is real it's the word of God it's the yes. delivering power of God Amen. Amen. you got to speak it over yourself Amen. Yes. Yes. You yes. Else? yeah I just wanted to come and Father, I just ask that you cleanse us. Yes. yes. yes Lord. Father, cleanse us. Cleanse our spirit, mind, body, soul, will, and emotions from all defilement. Yes, Lord. Father, I ask that you hide yes, us in the cleft of your rock, under the shelter of your wing, under the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask that you would release all that heaven has on our behalf. Yes. And Father, we thank you and give you honor and praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 I gotta play one other song. Hey, gotta play it. You need to leave, wait. It's my theme song. I'm gonna sing this one night. Nobody's gonna be here. Listen to the music. And it is well with me. This is a wrap. If you if you need any prayer, I know Nancy can stay around. I can stay around, and we will pray. I, I believe there's still some ministry that might need to happen. Thank you for coming. Come back next week, same time, same place. Maybe a different character. <laughs> That's okay. Lord, thank you. Thank you for sealing this. Yes, Seal us in your presence. Thank you for everything you've done. We celebrate deliverance and freedom for the captives and us. But use us to go out and break through to the unbelievers, to the hurting, to the lost. To set them free, Lord. Send us forth, Lord. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Send us forth, Lord, yeah. with your message. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.